Thank you, everyone, for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. Finally here. 125 years in the making. Buffalo soldiers retracing history. After the Civil War, the U.S. Army brought on a lot of black soldiers. And those black soldiers ended up getting the nickname Buffalo Soldiers. You might have heard of them. But what you might not have heard is that some of those Buffalo Soldiers rode bicycles. And actually, on this day, 125 years ago, there was a historic expedition that went from here in Fort Missoula, Montana, all the way to St. Louis, Missouri, almost 2,000 miles on bicycles. And actually, there's a brother here today who says he wants to retrace that entire trek. And he said, if I wanted to, I could join with him for part of that journey. It actually looks like there's a lot of people here to see him off. It's more than I expected. <laughs> Eric Cedeno is kind of a big deal in the amateur cycling world. He's got over 36,000 followers on Instagram where he used to mostly just post about how much he likes riding his bike. In 2014, he retraced the Underground Railroad all on a bicycle. And a lot of people were curious about this new Buffalo Soldier trip. St. Louis straight ahead. St. Louis straight ahead. All right, I'm going to St. Louis. All right. Thank you. But after the crowd left, it was 41 days of open road. So we had some time to talk. When I started out of Fort Missoula, mm -hmm. I got emotional because I'm in the place where <laughs> I admired those guys. So I knew that I'm standing where they were stationed, you know? So now, literally, I'm traveling through history. How did you find out about the Bike Corps? I mean, about 14 years ago, I decided I wanted to travel the whole country by bicycle. And right when I started traveling by bike, and I really started enjoying it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder who were the first people that traveled by bicycle. And that's how I found the Bicycle Corps, the 25th Infantry uh, out of Fort Missoula, Montana. The 25th Infantry was led by a white officer named Lieutenant James Moss, who was obsessed with new developments in bicycle technology. This was the late 1890s, just before mass production of the automobile. So for the army, the idea of a transportation method that you didn't have to give water or bales of hay to was extremely interesting. If this bicycle thing worked out, they could partially replace horses in warfare. So after a few demonstrations, the army decided to put the bicycles to the ultimate test. The men of the 25th Infantry would bike over 1,900 miles all the way to St. Louis. The reason they decided to go to St. Louis is because when you go from here, from Montana to St. Louis, you will go over mountains, mm -hmm. into the plains, and different climates, right? Different terrains. So you know, as strong of, of a rider I am, mm -hmm. I keep asking myself if I would have been able to do that expedition. I, my answer is no. I'm <laughs> really? not that strong. Those guys were superhuman. They were carrying about 57 pounds Whew. worth of gear. So yeah, their conditions were really tough. So what, what happened if the bikes broke down? I mean, we got pumps, I got a pump here. I see you got the bike tools over there. What, what do they do? That's a good question because one of that person that I connected the most with the story of the Bicycle Corps is uh, Private John Finley. John Finley was the mechanic of the expedition. He was a mechanic in Chicago before he enlisted. So when he enlisted and the, and the project came about, he volunteered. Technology has changed from 125 years ago. And John Finley will lose sleep overnight fixing the bikes. Everybody will be sleeping. That's when he had to go to work. I don't know if they would have been able to cross from Fort Missoula to St. Louis without him. The expedition itself went well. But pretty soon after they arrived, the Spanish-American War started, and a lot of the Buffalo soldiers were sent off to fight. And the bike thing kind of fell by the wayside. 
But the influence of the soldiers has continued, even off the battlefield. They were some of the first rangers at the national parks. And fighting on through World War II, they laid the groundwork for the eventual integration of the military and of civilian life. Since then, they've been honored with monuments, even by the U.S. Army itself. But back in 1897, that sort of respect probably seemed like a pipe dream. What did other people think about the 25th, these guys on bikes? So I know that they were respected in Missoula and they were respected uh, in Montana. But as they went east toward St. Louis, they encounter a lot of racism, you know? How hard it is to travel on mud, on single speed, and then have to deal with racism. That, that is a hard thing to do. It was grueling. Not only the difficulty of the elements, but also what they were up against as people. There were several times that they were um, told not to camp in several places. And most of the times they had to camp out in the back country, right? They weren't able to stay uh, in hotels or anything like that. And then you have to understand also, this black soldiers, we're talking about 1896, 1897. You know, their dads and their moms were probably slaves. Yeah. They were so proud to be servicemen. And to me also, I think that they wanted to prove something. The, the, the Buffalo soldiers wanted to prove like, we are equal. But that process of proving they were equal wasn't as pretty as some people would like to believe. The Buffalo soldiers are celebrated in museum exhibits, books, and even popular songs. But what doesn't often get talked about is the fact that the Buffalo Soldiers were on the front lines of the American effort to displace or outright kill indigenous people. Sometimes that meant direct warfare against native warriors. Other times it meant attacking unprotected villages with the goal of weakening indigenous tribes' ability to feed and defend themselves and their land. Because of this, a lot of native people have pointed out over the years that to them, the Buffalo Soldiers aren't exactly heroes. Just last year, a group objected to a Buffalo Soldier monument being built in Texas. They were a tool to remove our people from our lands, to exterminate our people, to incarcerate us. That is why I oppose it. The reality is that at the same time as the Buffalo Soldiers were fighting for their own equality, they were helping to take it away from others. When I ride my bike, I just remember those stories, you know, what they had to go through, you know. Sometimes my, my leg hurts, sometimes my back hurts, or, you know, uh, but I just remember what they went through, right, which it was really hard. I think when you get out on the road on a bike, you really start thinking about things, right? You really start thinking about why you're out there. Mm -hmm. And out here, just these couple of days, I've been thinking about the fact that these were men who, you know, their parents were enslaved. You know I mean, all these things they had to deal with, mm -hmm. these were oppressed people. And their way of showing that they deserved equality was a joint organization, but they ended up oppressing other people. Yeah. And that's what they ended up doing. And, and that's, that's something that, I, I can't be happy about that. Mm. You know what I mean? But that's, that's, that's our history, that's my history. Yeah, that's US history, right? That's US history. We didn't write the history, but, um, we could only honor some of the ancestors and hopefully we could learn from the past. I mean, how can we heal a nation if we don't heal the past or understand the past more than anything, right? How do we move forward as people of this country, right? We have to understand what happened. And maybe we heal from that. Even if that's ugly. Yeah, even if that's ugly. So when you're riding your bike, the thing that gets you to keep going is the history. Is the history. It's learning. 
In 2014, I decided to go from New Orleans, Louisiana, up to Niagara Falls, Canada, to retrace the history of the Underground Railroad by bicycle. I follow an old slave song um, called Follow the Drinking Gourd. Follow the Drinking Gourd, uh -huh. people thought it was just a song, but it was actually a GPS to get to freedom. And I got to see like historical sites of the Underground Railroad, spend the night at Underground Railroad, saw tunnels of their Underground Railroad all by bicycle, you know? What is that like, I mean, going on, tr actually retracing the Underground Railroad? I mean, imagine it's hard physically, right? You're riding a bike the whole way. What is that like, I mean, emotionally and everything else like that? You start connecting with with people, with, with freedom seekers that, that took the same route. Mm. You start connecting with ancestors. You know, one of the things that I do on every trip that I take historical trips, mm. I ask, for guidance to the ancestors. While he was riding, Eric got this feeling that he should change his route a little. That would mean finding a new place to stay, which can be pretty hard out in the countryside. But he managed to find a kind stranger who said they had a spare room where he could stay the night. So I got to his house and he, and he says, well, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm traveling along the Underground Railroad. And he said, oh, you like history? I said, yeah. This man go to the basement of his house and brought up 1840s and 1860s accounting ledgers of slaves that they owned. And he said, I'm not proud of my family history, but it's our history. And we used to own the most slaves in, in Southern Tennessee. You, you stayed at his house? And you didn't know that before you got there? Though. I didn't know that. It wasn't, and that's what I was telling you. Sometimes I asked, guide me through, show me stories, show me the history. <laughs> that is wild. And those experiences happen all the time, man. All really? the time. I have stories to tell you. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.